In Series 6 form, the Mitsubishi L200 pickup features significant changes. As a result, Mitsubishi claimed to have bought us the most advanced version of this model yet. It's smarter, safer, can tow more, carry heavier weights and is nicer to sit in. Plus it's now better equipped, more efficient and remains sensibly priced. You can see why so many buyers in this segment choose it. If you're buying a pickup in the UK, it's highly likely that you'll be looking at Mitsubishi's L200. This model has, after all, historically outsold all its rivals, especially in the UK, which accounts for virtually half of all versions of this model sold in Europe. So what if the brand could bring you a version that was better looking, even more capable, better equipped and more efficient? Well, that's what we're promised here with the L200 Series 6. Globally, Mitsubishi has over four decades of pickup production experience and has sold well over 4.7 million of them, mostly using L200 badging. A model range first launched here way back in 1982 and then updated in 86. It was a Series 3 third generation version we first saw in 1996 though that really hit the big time for this Japanese brand. Our model has since credited with the rejuvenation of this entire market segment. It was the first to recognise that the pickup needn't be merely a utilitarian workhorse fit only for farmers and jobbing builders. The Mark III model L200 could be dressed up to look and feel more like a lifestyle SUV and a very cost effective one at that. Tax loopholes just after the turn of the century uh, not only allowed businesses to reclaim VAT on the purchase price, but also enabled company car users to pay a flat tax rate that gave them big savings. And Mitsubishi found themselves with the only vehicle in the sector that could take full advantage. Customers flocked to the company's showrooms, and at one point, the brand was taking 70% of sales in this class. Competitors quickly caught up, although Mitsubishi held on to market leadership by continually evolving this model, first with the Mark IV design of 2005, then with a fifth generation version launched in 2015. This replacement model, uh, introduced here just four years later in the summer of 2019, carries over elements of that previous design's chassis and interior, plus the dimensions of the load bed are exactly the same, but much else is different. This is a pickup for the people designed with the help of the people, according to Mitsubishi anyway, who claimed that the improvements made here come as a direct result of feedback from loyal buyers. Uh, take the smoother new six-speed auto gearbox, the 3.5 tonne towing capacity, the enhanced ride and handling, the extra active safety technology and the increased payload and gross train weights. In all, the Japanese maker claims to have made over 4,200 changes to this vehicle, uh, drawing on its long heritage in this segment. It is, we're told, once again, number one for a reason. Now, if that's true, then we'll find out why as we put this pickup to the test. Next time out, with future generation L200 designs, Mitsubishi is going to have to engineer in more fundamental changes than are evident with this Series 6 model. Primarily, that'll need to include some form of electrification, which doesn't feature in the new power plant that the brand has been forced to develop in order to meet the exacting new Euro 60 temp emission standard. This is it, the only engine available in the range, a 150 horsepower 2.3 litre diesel, replacing the previous 178 horsepower 2.4 litre Myvec unit. Uh, the smaller capacity and lower output means a 25% reduction in the available power to weight ratio. How should potential buyers feel about that? Well, let's get out on the road and answer that question.
this fresh power plant is certainly no more refined than the previous one. Uh, Mitsubishi needs to put a bit more work in there, but in other respects, uh, first impressions are pretty positive. Yes, if you happen to be familiar with a top version of the previous model, or in fact, perhaps with a V6 Ranger or a VW Amarok, you would notice a slight pulling power deficiency here under hard acceleration or when you're towing a heavy load. But the perceived difference really isn't huge, and that's thanks to the way that this engine has been tuned to pull so strongly from very low revs. Peak torque of 400 Nm is developed 500 RPM lower in the rev range than before. It works well with the optional automatic transmission too, which now has six rather than five speeds and lets the engine operate more efficiently when you're cruising or under a light load. Uh, changes between the ratios could be a little smoother though. We're told that the suspension's been revised to make this pickup more car-like to drive. Uh, that though doesn't unfortunately mean the adoption of the kind of clever multi-link rear axle and coil sprung system that you would find on a Nissan Navara or a Mercedes X-Class in this segment, uh, the sort of arrangement that really does make a difference in this regard. Instead, Mitsubishi has uh, continued with the same rather crude cart-like uh, leaf sprung rear suspension setup, which is still also also used by Ford, Volkswagen, uh, Toyota, Isuzu and Sanyong pickups. Although to be fair, the brand has tinkered with it quite a lot. Uh, those rear springs get a greater number of leaves. Uh, the dampers are revised, both front and rear. Uh, there are increased spring rates on the front axle and the chassis that it's all been bolted to has been significantly strengthened, which is why the low speed ride over poor roads and bumpy surfaces is significantly better than before. But it remains very far from being like the kind of thing you get from a large SUV, even an old school off-road orientated one. Now we have to say that because Mitsubishi's marketing is peppered with references to this Series 6 model's SUV-like design. Yet when you hit a bump, a tarmac tear or a speed hump, this pickup jolts and shudders in a way that an SUV never would. Uh, the suspension changes made have been sufficient to lift the ride demeanor of this L200 clear of the cheaper offerings in the segment and up to the level of, say, a Ranger or a Hilux, but it still doesn't handle undulation as well as a leaf sprung VW Amarok and obviously it's well short of the sort of mature feel of a rear coil sprung Navara or X-Class. Steering feel is also considerably vaguer than you'd get in a big SUV. Again, that's a typical pickup trait, but it's one that brands like VW and Ford have done a little more to mitigate. All of this is relative, of course. I mean, start throwing any pickup about and you'll quickly discover its prodigious body roll and tire squealing limits. Get too heavy on the power or apply too much steering lock at low speeds in a vehicle like this and the rear end will start moving around as the tires spin away all the power power, although of course that'll be improved with a little cargo bed weight. It all goes with the territory. If you're a loyal L200 buyer, it's likely that you'll have a pretty realistic perspective on all that, and your expectations certainly won't be as misaligned with reality as Mitsubishi's marketing materials sometimes are. Ultimately, you'll be expecting a pickup to ride and handle like a pickup, in which case you might be pleasantly surprised by the extra cornering grip and traction that this Series 6 model offers over its predecessor, and that's thanks to the suspension changes and the larger wheels. Uh, you'll probably also enjoy the way that the engine, which is so vocal under acceleration, settles down so nicely at cruising speeds, and those are also aided by lower levels of road noise. This L200's all-up weight is just below the 2050 kilo threshold for commercial vehicles, which would otherwise limit its legal motorway limit to 60 miles an hour. Uh, as it is, this model's fairly irrelevant top speed is 106 miles an hour or 108 in the automatic. Uh, whatever the flat-out figure, what's more important to know is that the relatively strong standards of highway refinement mean that long journeys would be very comfortable in this truck. 
Perhaps most of all, though, you'll justify your choice of L200 by pointing out that this Mitsubishi still offers the most versatile four-wheel drive system in the segment, or at least most versions of it do. Uh, Entry-level four-life models still use the company's older tech, easy select, all-wheel traction setup, and that's one that forces you into two-wheel drive most of the time, unless you're off-road. Uh, when you're in an easy select L200, you have to manually select four-wheel drive, either in high range with locked transfer or in low range with a heavy duty rear differential lock. Uh, that rear diff lock, by the way, is still only available with the Easy Select system. Uh, for years now, though, most L200 buyers have been used to the brand's more sophisticated Super Select four wheel drive setup, and that's used also by Shogun SUV. Uh, this much cleverer system allows you more options on tarmac. On a paved surface like that, it's still possible to travel in two wheel drive if you want to, but there's also the option, which is rather amazingly uh, unique still in this class, to drive at speed in permanent four wheel drive without the excessive wear and tear that would be generated on rival four wheel drive systems as a result of transmission wind up. As a result, there's real SUV-like peace of mind when conditions are a bit icy. Uh, plus, you can use the circular Super Select controller just below the gear stick to shift from two-wheel drive, 2H, uh, to four-wheel drive, 4H, at speeds of up to 62 miles an hour if you feel conditions are getting a bit slippery. When you are driving on-road in four-wheel drive, 60% of the torque will be sent to the rear wheels instead of the 50-50 split that you often find elsewhere in the segment. Now, this more rear-biased arrangement helps to reduce understeer in tight bends and it improves traction when you're accelerating. If you do find yourself pushing on a little too ambitiously, then there's an effective MASTC, Mitsubishi Active Stability and Traction Control System, which will generally be able to rein things in before danger strikes. It monitors lateral g-forces from suspension movements and then tells the engine how much power it can safely offer. That rear orientated four wheel drive torque split we just mentioned also provides more stability when you're towing, something that will also be aided by the standard trailer stability system. Uh, now, yes, towing, uh, you might be concerned that this Series 6 model's smaller engine could affect the L200's capability there. Uh, this time around, there is, after all, 30 newton meters less pulling power and 28 fewer braked horses than were developed by the old uh, Series 5 model's top diesel unit. In fact, though, the towing capability has actually risen from 3.1 tonnes before to a class best equaling 3.5 tonnes now. Although that's only if the trailer in question has three axles. If it has only two axles, the previous 3.1 tonne limit still applies. That means the gross train weight has also risen to 6,155 kilos. That's one of the highest figures in the segment. It's just as well then that the brakes are now more capable too. The stoppers now use 320 millimeter discs with two piston calipers. What about off-road capability? Well, as you'd expect, it's just as good as ever, remaining one of this Mitsubishi's defining strengths. Off-piste, your starting point in a Super Select equipped L200 will be the 4H setting, which is selectable either with or without a lock differential and enables full delivery of torque to every wheel, regardless of obstacles. Uh, for really tough conditions, you'll want the toughest 4LLC low-range locked differential setting, which will ease you out of whatever you've stuck yourself into as all the wheels turn together and power is distributed equally front to rear. Uh, the 205 mils of ground clearance you get with most models will help here, as will an approach angle of 30 degrees, a departure angle of 22 degrees and a ramp breakover angle of 24 degrees. The wading depth that remains at 600 mils. In short, this is a very capable pickup indeed, even on standard road tyres. Opt for one of the top Barbarian spec models, an L200 like the one that we're driving here, and two further systems enhance that uh, off-road ability, both operated by switches next to the four-wheel drive dial selector. Hill descent control is something we could have expected to see on earlier versions of this model, a feature that's able to maintain a constant vehicle speed when you're descending a gradient, uh, the type of situation where engine braking alone may not be enough. Uh, you can even set the descending speed anything between 2 and 12 miles an hour.
Also new to this model is the Land Rover style option of preset off-road driving modes that set this vehicle up for specific kinds of terrain. Uh, there are four possible settings here, gravel, mud and snow, sand, and if you're in 4LLC, rock. In each of these, uh, the system can regulate wheel slip, uh, engine torque, the intervention of the active stability control and traction control systems, and also the settings of the automatic transmission, if that's been fitted. Uh, all with the goal of maximizing grip and maintaining forward progress. The high level of wheel articulation that's engineered into an L200 will further help in conditions like that, and it also delivers benefit in terms of tarmac maneuverability. Now, this Mitsubishi doesn't feel quite as unwieldy as some of its rivals around town. That's helped by an 11.8 meter turning circle, although uh, vast by SUV standards, that's relatively tight for a one ton truck, and a standard reversing camera on most models makes parking this truck less of a chore than it used to be. Plus, the introduction of forward collision warning autonomous braking on most models offers a bit of extra urban peace of mind. What this all boils down to is a confirmation that this Series 6 model is usefully more adept than its predecessors at getting you where you need to be, whether that might be Surbiton or the Serengeti. Would it all be enough to make you want one if you're shopping in this segment and you weren't already considering an L200? Well, possibly not, but this Mitsubishi should now rate more credibly on any buyer's shortlist. Over its lifetime, the L200 series has had many attributes, but it's never been visually striking. As you can see, that's changed with this sixth generation design. Buyers won't much care that what's under the skin isn't very different from what went before. What's important is that this Series 6 model now has overtaking presence, and plenty of it. Curti of this restart front end, striking new dynamic shield design identity borrowed from Mitsubishi's current SUVs, a major step forward from the bland looks that characterized previous L200s. Uh, the clamshell bonnet has been raised by 40 millimeters, and it's now flanked by slimmer LED headlights that uh, sit 100 millimeters higher. On all but the entry-level model, the clusters incorporate LED daytime running lights too, and this top Barbarian X version also gets LED front fog lights set into distinctive sculpted recesses in the front corners. Uh, completing the new front end styling is a more pronounced and substantial front bumper, contributing to the more rugged look while still allowing for a 30 degree approach angle when you're adventuring off road. Move to the side and at first glance you might think that little has changed as with the previous Series 4 and Series 5 models the profile is characterised by this sweeping so-called J-line which separates the cab from the cargo bed and which gives this Mitsubishi a more car-like lifestyle orientated look than you'd get from squarer boxy arrivals but plenty is also different. There are larger squared off wheel arches, those are set into chunkier bodywork flares which in most models are filled with big 18 inch wheels. Uh, the aerodynamics are improved by more streamlined mirrors and sleeker rear bodywork while the side steps where they're fitted are now wider and they've been raised slightly so that uh, damage will be less likely if you're minded to put the L200's 24 degree breakover angle to the test. As you can see, this is a double cab pickup, that being the body style that the L200 range is based around and the one that almost all buyers in this segment now tend to want. However, uh, customers with tighter budgets and more utilitarian uses in mind can also talk to their dealers about a club cab version of the base trimmed model, which has occasional rear seating if you need it. It's no longer possible to order the single cab body style. Both the body shapes that you can have are based around the same uh, tough, torsionally rigid underpinnings used by the previous generation model. 
And at the rear, well, there's only so much you can do to restyle the rear aspect of a pickup, but Mitsubishi has tried anyway. They've changed every single panel, and on upper spec models, they've added in a tailgate with a damper and a tailgate assist mechanism for easier opening and closing. Uh, a more substantial rear bumper offers better protection and a much larger area for stepping on, while still offering the same 22 degree departure angle as its predecessor. So, quite a lot's different outside, but if you happen to have owned the previous generation model, you'll find it all pretty familiar once you take a seat in the cab. Uh, Mitsubishi insists that significant changes have made this interior more SUV-like. For example, the uh, smarter silver garnish around this center stack mirrors the interior look of the brand's various crossover models, but that really epitomizes the extent of this update package, which hasn't altered the fundamental look and design of the dashboard and the various ancillary controls. Still, the detail stuff will be appreciated by L200 loyalists. Uh, things like the smarter door card inlays, the knee pads that improve cornering comfort, and the chunkier steering wheel, which uh, can now be heated on top models. Through that, you view an instrument cluster that's been redesigned to incorporate the new uh, color center LCD display necessary for the operation of this Series 6 model's various extra camera-driven safety features. Uh, we could do without its CU message when you're powering off, though. Uh, uh, just above this little screen is the usual Mitsubishi display showing the various states of four-wheel drive activation. Uh, the front seats have been redesigned, now fitted with extra side bolstering, although they still can't be had with lumbar support. And the upholstery is smarter too, especially on this top Barbarian X variant, which gets swish suede-style inserts in the leather seats, along with LED mood lighting and LED interior lamps. It all gives it a pleasantly high-end feel. As before, getting comfortable is easy thanks to plenty of seat and wheel adjustment. And as you'd expect from a pickup, there's a commandingly high driving position. That means frontward visibility is generally fine, although the rate right angle of these front A pillars can sometimes slightly impede your view when you're turning at junctions. As with most pickups, the restricted view that you get through the rear window makes it much more difficult to gauge what's behind. So the rear view camera that is standard from mid-level warrior spec upwards becomes almost essential, particularly actually as parking sensors are included only on this priciest top Barbarian X model. Infotainment provision lower down the range is pretty rudimentary, although it does include Bluetooth connectivity and a USB port. Uh, from mid-level Warrior trim upwards, though, you get this SDA, Smartphone Link Display Audio Center Dash Touchscreen. Uh, it's the same one that was used by the previous Series 5 design, which means it's still a dimly lit and rather rudimentary 7-inch monitor positioned above the climate control switch gear. From here, you access uh, DAB audio, media and Bluetooth phone features, Plus, you now get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring functionality, which is something that you might find yourself using quite a lot because navigation isn't included as part of any of the trim levels, even the really expensive ones. That approach really won't play well with potential buyers who want to keep a cap on data usage or who habitually drive in areas with a poor network signal. The designers have also devoted a little extra attention to in-cab practicality, adding in an extra tray in front of the gear stick uh, for smaller items or for your smartphone. Otherwise, interior storage provision is much as before. Uh, there's a big glove box and a deep stowage box between the seats here, uh, which on this top variant has a lovely quilted cover with a 12 volt socket hidden down in the depths inside. Uh, you also get chunky grab handles on each A pillar and an overhead compartment for your sunglasses. Plus, there are reasonably sized door bins with bottle holders that can take one litre plastic bottles and which have been set at an incline so your beverage will be held in place even when you're travelling over bumpy roads. Let's take a seat in the back. Uh, go for the single club cab variant and you'll be faced with slim rear hinge doors which admit you to a couple of small rear seats suitable only for occasional use because of their very limited legroom. Almost all L200 buyers though will prefer this double cab body style which has two properly opening rear doors. 
And once inside, well, it helps that the cabin zone of an L200 is slightly longer than many of its rivals. Uh, that's why you're offered slightly more legroom here than is the segment norm. As a result, a six-foot adult can comfortably sit behind a similarly sized driver, although the low seating position does mean that they have to bunch their knees up a bit. It's also worth pointing out that this cabin is one of the narrowest in the segment, so it is slightly more difficult to fit three adults back here should the need arise to do so. Uh, when there are only two of you though, you can use this central armrest with its twin integrated cup holders. As usual in a pickup, the seat backs are a little more upright than they would be in a normal car, but the 25 degree backrest angle isn't too bad by pickup standards and headroom's reasonable too. An extra storage tray for smaller items now features and from Barbarian spec upwards, USB ports were provided too. Plus there is a new rear air circulator which cools down back seat occupants much more effectively than was the case with the previous model. Uh, there are seat back pockets, overhead coat hooks and on this top version smartly trimmed stitched door cards. Uh, the seat cushions feature the expected trio of three point belts and behind this bench here uh, there's room to store tools and other items that you might want to keep out of sight. The Series 6 L200 range is primarily based around this double cab body style, although you can also talk to your dealer about a club cab model with occasional rear seating. Uh, the old single cab body shape is no longer offered in our market. It's the double cab version that we're focusing on here though, and it's the only body style that's really targeted for leisure use as well as industrial purposes. In this form, the L200 is priced in the usual 22 to 33,000 pound bracket, figures which of course exclude VA. Now we say of course because the fleets and the small businesses who buy nearly all L200s are VAT exempt so there's no point in quoting an inclusive total. Uh, previously, the L200 Rangers featured base models with a detuned diesel engine. Uh, this time around, though, that approach has been dispensed with, so the Euro 6D compliant 2.3 litre uh, features across the range in a single 150 horsepower form. From launch, there were four trim levels, starting with base for life, the only one offering you the option to make a £1,200 saving over the double cab body style and go for the club cab body shape instead. But most L200 customers need a double cab and they want to buy in further up the lineup, uh, which is what you have to do if you want to have the £1,400 option of automatic transmission. There are three trim levels, uh, mid-level Warrior, Barbarian or top spec Barbarian X, which is what we have here. On to the value proposition those prices represent. Now Mitsubishi has never tried to offer the cheapest option in the pickup segment, but if you look at what you get in terms of equipment and capability, the L200 represents decent value. As for rivals, well, the segment's cheapest pickup is a Sangyong Musso, but most users discount that one on the basis of performance, build quality and restricted towing capacity. Tougher opposition for Mitsubishi comes from Isuzu's D-Max, which might say you around £1,500, but that's now quite an old design. More direct rivals are priced very similarly to the L200, models like Ford's Ranger, uh, Toyota's Hilux and Nissan's Navara. If you are looking further up the range, then you might also be considering a Volkswagen Amarok as an alternative. Uh, one of those would cost £1,000 or so more with comparable spec. For a comparable Mercedes X-Class though, uh, you can think upwards of around £3,000 more. Mitsubishi reckons that the specification of this vehicle gives it an advantage over the various rivals I've just mentioned, so let's check that out in detail. And those really wanting this L200 to work for its living might quite possibly be happy with the entry-level 4Life variant. After all, it comes with most of the stuff that you really need, uh, air conditioning, Bluetooth compatibility with a USB port, and a full-size spare wheel. Plus, the double cab version gets 16-inch alloy wheels, electric rear windows, uh, and cruise control with an adjustable speed limiter too. In addition, the four life variants are the only ones in the range that feature a rear differential lock. So if your L200 is really gonna be used for heavy off-roading, you might want to sacrifice a few creature comforts and stay at that level in the range. 
Ideally though, you'd stretch at least as far as mid-range Warrior trim, if only to get the much more sophisticated Super Select four-wheel drive system, which makes tarmac driving in this Mitsubishi safer in damp conditions. And that's because the Super Select setup allows this to be the only model in the segment that can be driven permanently in four-wheel drive on tarmac. Uh, the Warrior model gets a much smarter look, courtesy of larger 18-inch wheels, an extra chrome for the front grille, the door handles and the mirrors. Plus, it features front fog lights, privacy glass, auto headlamps and wipers, power folding mirrors, LED daytime running lights, a rear step bumper and a package of camera driven safety kit that we're going to cover off in just a moment. Inside in a Warrior Spec L200 you'll find dual zone air conditioning, a rear view camera, a push button starter, a multi information dash display, a leather steering wheel and gear knob and upgraded cabin trim. And there's a much higher level of infotainment and that's courtesy of a 7 inch SDA centered dash infotainment screen incorporating a better quality six speaker stereo and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, smartphone mirroring. Should you go further than that up the range? Well, find a VAT exclusive £30,000 budget and you can get yourself a Barbarian Spec L200. And that's what you'll need if you want hill descent control to ease you down slippery slopes and the extra off-road modes which Mitsubishi has developed for this Series 6 model. Uh, these offer four specific drivetrain driver aid settings that you can select dependent on terrain, gravel, mud and snow, uh, sand and rock. Barbarian spec models also get niceties like damper and spring assisted closing for the tailgate, leather upholstery, a powered driver's seat, LED mood lighting, puddle lamps, illuminated door entry guards, rear USB ports with a smartphone tray and special branding on the doors and the carpets. If you really want to go to town on your L200, you'll want this Barbarian X version, which comes only with auto transmission and will be identifiable to the L200 Cognoscenti by its LED front fog lights, front and rear parking sensors and LED number plate lights. Inside, this top model gets a 360 degree camera system, plus classy suede-like Alston inserts for the leather seats uh, with six pack style upholstery. There's also an LED interior light package, a heated steering wheel, a special branding and some extra camera safety kit features. On to options. Now we'd certainly want a load bed liner like the one that's been fitted in there. And if you're going to be leaving potentially valuable items in the cargo area, you're going to need a hard top too. It comes with roof rails and darkened windows. Alternatively, uh, you could consider this retractable tonneau cover instead. Some customers will like the idea of sports styling bars too. Uh, those are available in either black or gray, or you can specify the more typical chromed rear sports bars. Uh, roof carry are available for bikes, surfboards and skis and of course there are the usual optional tow bars and seat covers. You could also add floor mats in either textile or rubber and a lockable utility box in the load area. Uh, On to aesthetics, a set of gunmetal grey 18 inch diamond cut alloy wheels can be specified and you can have the front bumper garnished in either black or grey, while for lower down a chrome under garnish is available. A bonnet guard protects the leading edge of the bonnet from stone chips and you can add wheel arch extensions too. Uh, bear in mind that you're almost certainly going to be paying your dealer more for your choice of paint colour. Uh, the ones that come as standard are the two solid shades, polar white and volcanic red. Uh, beyond those there are various extra cost metallic and pearlescent shades uh, and they include two fresh ones, volcanic grey and as in this case sun flare orange. Also new is a unique white diamond finish. Now this combines pearlescent and metallic finishes to create a lacquer like effect where the colour seems to change dependent on the light. On to safety. Now, the previous Series 5's version of this model was one of the very first pickups to introduce any kind of camera-driven safety technology. But with this Series 6 design, quite a lot more has been added. Avoid entry-level trim and your L200 will come with a lane departure warning system and forward collision mitigation, uh, the latter being one of those systems that scans the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards as you drive. If one's detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. 
If you want more, you'll have to stretch to this top Barbarian X trim level. With this flagship variant, you get four more camera features. Uh, three of those you might already be familiar with. AHB, auto high beam headlamps, which automatically dip themselves at night. RCTA, rear cross traffic alert, which warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. And BSW, that's blind spot warning with lane change assist. Now that uses a microwave radar unit in the rear bumper and it alerts you if you're just about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle via an alarm and an illuminated warning signal in the door mirror. Uh, the other new L200 safety feature, though, uh, you're rather less likely to have come across. That's Mitsubishi's UMS, and that's Ultrasonic Miss Acceleration System. Now, this detects cars or solid objects parked within four meters of your front or rear bumper uh, when you're starting up. And if necessary, it will actually automatically brake the car to prevent accidents that might otherwise be caused by unintended acceleration. It's really neat. Uh, this is also a fundamentally safe product, and that's thanks to Mitsubishi's so-called RISE, or Reinforced Impact Safety Evolution Technology. Uh, through this, this Series 6 model's body combines a strong ladder frame chassis, front crumple zones, and strategic points of reinforcement for extra cabin protection. As you'd expect from a modern pickup, uh, there is ABS braking with electronic brake force distribution, which adjusts the level of braking power between front and rear axles depending on load. Um, an additional brake assist setup helps in panic stops, which will be advertised to following motorists via an emergency stop signal system, which flashes the hazard lights to warn them. And all models get a system that recognizes when the accelerator and brake pedals are being pressed together and gives priority to the braking system so as to prevent accidental acceleration. Uh, we like this Mitsubishi's ASTC, Active Stability and Traction Control System 2. Uh, that's there to independently regulate braking force to the wheels in a way that maintains stability. ASTC also optimizes traction whenever wheel spin is detected by controlling the engine output and seamlessly applying brake force to the spinning wheels. Uh, now, we should also mention the trailer stability assist setup, which helps to prevent trailer snaking. Uh, should all this be insufficient to prevent an accident, then you'll be glad of another rare fitment in this sector, a driver's knee bag, which works with the standard twin front and side airbags in the cabin. Plus, there's a steering column that's designed to retract in a collision to protect your body. The cargo bed of this Series 6 L200 is pretty much exactly as it was in the previous generation model, which still means that it is uh, fractionally smaller than is the case with some notable rivals, although the potential payload it can carry is now slightly increased. Uh, we'll get to that, but let's start here with the tailgate, which on top Barbarian spec models features a damped mechanism rather than a straightforward tethering cable system, so it won't fall back unexpectedly when you're trying to retract it. Uh, on these plusher variants, the panel won't retract down to a completely vertical fallen position as it would do on a base model because of the addition of this useful step. Once everything's open here at the business end, you're faced with a cargo bed 475 millimeters deep and 1470 mils in both length and width. Uh, to give you some class perspective, that's a bit larger than the cheaper Sangyong Musso, but slightly smaller than cargo bed of, say, uh, Nissan Navara or a Mercedes X-Class. There is only a few centimeters in it, though. Uh, if you want a much bigger loading area and you have only occasional use for this double cab model's rear seats, then bear in mind that the club cab body shape gives you a loading bay 1850 mils long. Either way, the redesigned side steps and bumper steps of this Series 6 design will make this cargo bed easier to get at. With an L200 double cab in this area, uh, you'll be able to take a payload of up to 1,080 kilos. That's up from 1,045 kilos before. And it's even more safely above the 1,000 kilo minimum capability, which is necessary for this truck to be registered as a low tax business asset by the jobbing builders and the farmers who will primarily buy it. Uh, that total payload figure, though, remains still 100 kilos less than a rival Nissan Navara. As usually 
in this class, the payload is a lot less. Uh, it's up to 625 kilos in this case when the vehicle is exercising its full towing capability. That has now been increased from 3.1 to 3.5 tonnes. A close inspection of the spec sheet, though, reveals that this enhanced towing figure applies only to a three-axle trailer. For a two-axle trailer, uh, the threshold remains at 3.1 tonnes. If you try to tug along anything heavier, well, you'll invalidate the warranty. Uh, overall, though, it is a strong showing, and it means that, as before, this uh, L200 has one of the highest gross train weights in the pickup segment. Uh, it's 6,000. 155 kilos. So if you want to load up the back with enough beach pebbles to cover your driveway at the same time as you're towing your boat home, well, that'll be no problem. Here we have a cargo bed liner, but even if you do without that, you get useful vertical grooves in the bed floor that more easily allow you to partition your loads and to prevent small items from moving around in transit. Uh, there are six load lashing points for tying things down, and as you expect, there's enough width between the wheel arches to be able to slide in a Euro pallet. If you remember the old pre-2015 era Series 4 version, you'll miss that model's electrically retracting rear window, which allowed uh, longer items to poke through into the cab. Uh, the tailgate, it's not lockable, that's not much point really when people could just lift stuff out anyway, but a range of optional hard tops and tonneau covers could solve that problem for you if that's an issue. On to running costs. Uh, the L200 needed to up its game here. The previous model's 2.4 litre diesel engine wasn't particularly efficient. It couldn't be operated with the industry standard AdBlue additive to neutralise harmful pollutants, and it couldn't even be had with a start-stop system in its more powerful geysers. All of that was unacceptable going forward, hence the replacement 2.3 litre units Euro 6D compliancy. To gain that, engine stop and start has been standardised, as has the incorporation of the AdBlue additive system. The AdBlue tank provided here only needs topping up every 12,000 miles and it's particularly large at 21 litres. You access it via a dedicated filler in the rear wing, so it should only need to be filled at regular service intervals. Clearly this is a cleaner and more frugal engine, although the gains are difficult to judge uh, thanks to the industry's recent switch to the more stringent WLTP measuring cycle. Uh, those WLTP readings see the manual version of this model returning 32.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 231 grams per kilometer of CO2 or 29.7 miles per gallon and 254 grams per kilometer for the automatic version. Uh, Combined with the 75 litre fuel tank, that should give this truck an operating range of close to 700 miles between fill-ups. An eco-meter on the instrument cluster display screen shows you when you're driving economically. And another screen, um, somewhat pointlessly actually, uh, shows you for how long the uh, engine stop and start system has been activated for in your journey. Now, at some point, the Treasury will probably start to rate pickups under the same kind of CO2-based personal taxation system which is used for ordinary cars, but that hasn't happened yet. So uh, this kind of light truck remains a very tax-efficient choice for business transport. Uh, at the time of this test in late 2019, uh, benefiting kind taxation on this kind of pickup was set at a flat rate of £3,350, regardless of emissions. So if you pay tax at 20%, that's just £670 a year or £55.83 a month. Even for a 40% taxpayer, it works out at uh, £1,340 per annum or £111.67 a month. Bearing in mind that very few company cars will cost a 20% payer as little as £50 a month, the potential for savings is obvious. There are savings to be made in fuel-based taxation too. Company car drivers are taxed on private use fuel which is paid for by the employer and they have a rate that at the time of this test was set at £22,600 for the year and then multiplied by the car's BIK tax percentage and the user's salary tax band are the same way that company car tax is calculated. Again, a pickup can bring big savings. The current taxable benefit amount for this type of vehicle is £633 and you'll be taxed at 20 or 40% of that depending on on your banding. Crunch the figures and work out how much you'll save. 
what else? Well, all L200s get a 12-year anti-corrosion warranty and the peace of mind of the so-called Me and My Mitsubishi cover. This includes a warranty that's quite long, uh, five years in total, although it's restricted to 62,500 miles. Uh, the roadside assistance cover only lasts for three years, but it is a pan-European package which provides vehicle recovery in the event of an accident or breakdown and will also help if your L200 is stolen or vandalized. Uh, the program will also deal with the little things too, like filling up with the wrong kind of fuel, for example, and it applies 24-7 in over 30 countries throughout Europe. Now, should you have an accident, uh, there is also a Mitsubishi First customer support service to uh, sort everything out for you. Uh, the brand's dealers also tend to be rather better tuned into the needs of pickup owners than those of other mainstream makers. Service intervals will seem a bit short if you're used to those of an SUV uh, requiring maintenance visits every 12,500 miles or every year, whichever comes first. Uh, the screen in the instrument cluster shows you when the next garage visit's due. Uh, it'll certainly help that the new engine uses a timing chain, which will never need replacing, and it can go longer intervals between engine coolant changes and inspections for things like valve clearance. Plus, uh, L200 buyers can budget ahead for maintenance costs, uh, and that's by investing in a Mitsubishi service plan at point of purchase, which for a modest sum will cover them for scheduled garage visits, either for up to three years or for up to five years. 90% of buyers choose that. Residual values should be pretty strong. Uh, the previous model commonly managed to return over 40% of its original purchase price after the industry standard three-year 60,000 mile operating period. And this Series 6 version should certainly match or improve on that. Uh, independent experts reckon that the exact figures should be uh, somewhere between 41 and 44% after three years or 60,000 miles. Finally, let's tell you about insurance, which is rated between groups 37E and group 42E depending on the variant that you choose. You can see why the L200 sells so well. Sure, you can pay less for a pickup in this segment, but you'll then sacrifice when it comes to drive dynamics both on and off road. Plus, it'll probably be less durable too. By the same token, you can also get more luxurious and premium feeling trucks in this segment, but they'll cost you a lot more. In contrast, this Mitsubishi seems to have hit something of a buying sweet spot in the pickup sector, particularly in this Series 6 form. We can see why the Japanese brand wants to emphasize this sixth generation model's practical improvements, the extra payload and gross train weight, the improved safety tech, uh, the greater towing capability. But the truth is that the main reason this Mark VI model will be well received is because it looks so much sharper. Rough road aesthetic presence is a major pickup buying factor. And to be frank, the previous Series 5 design simply didn't have enough of it. Other issues? Well, a few. The diesel engines, small reductions in power and capacity this time around are evident under harsh acceleration or when you're towing heavy loads. But other than that, uh, buyers used to the previous generation model won't really notice any significant difference. Otherwise, the problems are those relating to most pickups. Uh, come to a light truck of this kind, expecting it to handle like an SUV, and as ever, you'll find yourself disappointed. In summary, you can see why so many pickup buyers choose this one, whether their need is to transport quad bikes and surfboards or hardcore and shovels. As before, it's tough, it can carry plenty, and it offers a wide range of choice. But now, it's that bit easier to live with too. All of which, more than ever, makes this Mitsubishi a vehicle that customers in this segment just can't ignore.